Hi there, adapters and adapters tech X people. Thanks again for taking the time to join us and a big call out to our friends at Quest Dex and another amazing uh, annual hotel conference, AHC in Manchester, where I had the pleasure of chairing the Techno Technology Council. So thanks again for, for uh, really hosting an amazing event. So today we are going to have an amazing conversation with an expert in the space of sustainability in architecture. So I'm delighted to have Neil Davies on the show. Uh, let me tell you, a founding partner at his own firm, close to odd 10 years now in, in, in place, doing amazing things, and uh, has some really interesting perspectives on what it means to have a functioning, real, sustainable building, regardless of whether it's a home or an industrial complex or some type of co-living um, adventure that we're all building these days. And equally, you know, what I noticed about the, that he features is the NDA Labs, low energy building, renewable tech, future proofing. And actually on his website is in public eye, uh, the, the consumption of use of carbon uh, for him and his team. And it's out there front and center. So you're in the business and let's chat about your architectural firm. What do you focus on? and what has changed in the last couple of years? Um, that's a good question. I mean, in in short, and trying to answer that as briefly as possible, um, we set up the practice kind of 10 years ago um, with the sole intention of providing residential projects where the buildings work as hard as they possibly can. So um, that has kind of developed over time. But really, certainly in the last five years, um, we've restructured the business and... Um, mainly about building in the tech and the renewable tech into the offering because all of our clients expected that. They really all expected the latest, uh, the latest kind of gadgets or the latest kind of technology, which has, you know, actually morphed into renewable tech. Um, and in a way, we've kind of still been doing what we've always done and feel in some ways that the world has come towards us slightly um, in how we were innovating and how we were creating, um, you know, sort of new approaches to things. Um, and really, that's, that was the genesis of all of it. Um, and, uh, you know, NDA Labs was born out of that. You know, NDA, NDA Labs was, was a formalization of what we were doing and talking to the latest technologists, the latest uh, manufacturers, um, and really how would we build that into all of our research, which then fed into um, both current and future projects. So that's that's kind of in a nutshell, really, how NDA has has evolved to, to, to kind of current day. So we, um, and you I mean, I've seen you on a couple of really, you know, and you're not afraid to get into this stuff uh, with with comedic appeal, but with complete <laughs> passion uh, about this topic. And and uh, you have you have opinions on everything from you know, carbon and concrete and, and what, what is, what is the, the, the impact of that on our environment and how you bring that, how do you connect the mission of, and, and, and somewhat an evangelist of this to the practicality of delivering a building on time, on price? How do you make that happen? I mean, and certainly our buildings um, aren't cheap. And if you, if you really kind of apply the current metric um, that, you know, really the cost is king, then you are going to struggle to justify you know, the additional cost, um, which can be something in the region of kind of 10 to 15 percent above the more, you know, sort of more building uh, sort of similar building products without all of the, the tech and the, the earth friendly concrete and all this sort of stuff. So um, but it really depends on what metric you measure your buildings against. And that's that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really the heart of those kind of conversations with our clients, with people that we advise. Right. And it doesn't matter what they are, whether they're pension funds, uh, private equity, um, you know, investors. It's more about have you really thought about this in in a much more holistic way, and that that goes beyond life cycle costing. That goes beyond uh, you know circular economy, as as you know you're you're studying at the moment. It, this this really is about you know everything is joined up. So it, in my mind, you know, whether I'm talking to you know private equity. Um, groups or whether we're talking to institutional investors, local authorities, private clients, it it's it's all of the same conversation. It's it's all joined up. It just depends which part that you have to kind of tease out 
depending on which part they are interested in. You know, and Neil, that's a very interesting point. And I think the, the notion of the triple bottom line, right? We're, we're talking people, you know, planet profit, and then bringing that into the balance sheet. And so, yeah, it's more expensive up front, but I noticed on, on some of the, the, the work you've done is that there is a return on that uh, when you put yeah. in the right equipment. And can you can yeah. you talk about how you're deploying the latest thing technology around, you know, I've seen you, you, you how you use water, right? The heat that yes. comes and how you repurpose that heat. Can you speak a yeah. little bit about, about how you do that? And is there a return on that? That eventually yeah, I mean, balances I, out for the 15% upfront cost? Yeah, no, I mean, ultimately, I mean, you know, when it comes down to it, we're really, we're really trying to create buildings. They're really trying to create projects that have as low an operational, a low as operational energy as possible. Um, and note, I haven't said carbon in that. I'm just talking about energy. Mm. So we we talk a lot about energy loads. Um, we talk about, you know, look, is that house one kilowatt, three, five, whatever, you know, and we tr we establish a baseline and then we kind of target as low uh, an amount of energy that that is going to use in its day to day. Um, and really, the, there's a quite a skill in doing that. But ultimately, that pays for itself. Um, and the higher the energy prices at the moment, the quicker that that pays for itself. But that was a lot harder to justify when the energy prices were lower. But ultimately, you use a, a, a combination of different things uh, that we'll get into more detail. But yeah. ultimately, you know, you're using renewables, you're using, uh, you know, air source heat pumps, heat exchangers, and, and, you know, air tightness of the fabric, you know, insulation. There's a lot of different factors that you pull in to make sure that that, that energy uh, demand for that building is as low as it can be. So as we begin to wrap up here on this segment, because clearly we yeah. want everybody to know that we've got an extended vodcast after this that will go on probably for five hours, I don't know, but it'll probably be 40 minutes between you and me, <laughs> because art behind the scenes can, can make that shorter, uh, yeah. is your tips and takes for owners uh, going into where we're sitting right now in energy crisis and buildings will be demand. You're going to demand that, I think, to make their buildings more efficient. So, what are your two or three tips and takes for investors and operators today uh, to do something different about really embracing the notion of sustainability that's actually hitting your bottom line to the positive? Hard to believe. Yeah, I mean, first off, I mean, you know, if you kind of break it down, you have to kind of establish your baseline. You have to kind of know, you know how you're building or your collection of buildings, uh, your estate, whatever, you, you've got to know how well that is performing. Um, you know, if, without a baseline, you've got no idea where you're going beyond and how well you can kind of improve that stock. Um, and then, you know, the second and the third phase is um, in terms of actually, you know, going about your business and kind of, you know, looking at all the options to upgrade kind of stock and do things differently um, versus then, you know, how you then monitor that beyond. Um, you know, that really is informed by that first stage. Um, you know, the tip, I, the only thing I would say is that it is an involved process. It isn't a, you know, a one size, um, you know, fits all um, at all. And it does involve engagement from the client. So if you are serious and you're not into greenwashing and you really want to make a difference and you really know or you really think that it's important, you know, just divide it into those three stages, you know, establish baseline, you know, yeah. look at all the options of what you can kind of do. And then then once you've done all of that, actually monitor it and see how it's performing and how it can be improved further. And that that avoids stranded assets that really kind of, you know, future proofs, you know, that building that those kind of collections of buildings beyond, um, you know, our lifetimes, really. And that's that's the key. Well, thanks, Neil. This is, it's amazing how 10 minutes just zips away. We barely <laughs> ever scratched the surface here. So a yeah. big thanks to Neil. Thank you for doing that. And thanks for the conversation. So thanks for listening. We're going to catch you again next week. Thanks again to Questex and AHC and a, and a great event in Manchester. And to everybody listening, we'll catch you next time. Keep looking over the fence.